Hello, I'm Rosa Jamali, the translator of this book, The House of Edrisis, which is a very popular novel in Persian by Ghazal Alizadeh. It's been translated and read by me. In this slideshow, in this presentation, you will listen to chapter 2. Mrs. Edrisi sighed in despair. Card reading was over. She tossed the deck of cards on the dining table. It's get getting worse day by day. Vahab stopped reading, scratching his nose. Nothing's moved. The old lady smiled. Poor the man who'd marry her. Vahab's eyes glimmered mischievously. Is there a man like that? At least for money? One should be perilous to marry such a freak. Mrs. Edrisi closed her eyes. They do, as if you don't know people. Poor the man, what if she so heal relief stone? The old lady chuckled. She would see far off. A whole sum of old contradictions. Fed up with cards, the old lady nodded. The clock struck eleven. In the far-off distance, the owl was howling, placing her ears on the window. Granny listened. Such a throat howls excruciatingly loud. Won't it cut its throat? Vahab smiled, wondering what the owl does. Granny left, resting the door ajar. Vahab kept solitary vi vigil at night, reading and staying up by the daybreak. About midnight, a grey cat popped through the window. Through the cat's eyes, there was a wavy spectrum of seaweed colors. Vahab pampered the cat, soothed its backbones, pouring pouring and mewing around, up and down, into the cushions, turning a page over. The cat opened its eyes. Just before the sunrise, he used to move to the kitchen. The kitchen was in the corner of the dining room, Warsaw samovars, with paintings on the wall. They, they looked crooked in the copper pans. A cockroach was squeaking around an onion crust. Branches of the weeping willow hit the windows. Vahab would leave the kettle on to boil some water, brewing tea and setting the silver tea set. And then he left for the dining room, drinking cups and cups of tea, one after another. Yavar was in the next door. The hedge of the doors creaked. Twilight glowed on Yavar's salt and pepper beard shabby and scruffy untidy hair bony skinny cheeks dreamy and bewitched sleepy eyes seemed rather like sockets and holes curved into the darkness his hunchback and loose and expressionless arms seemed like objects out of his body he used to make a lot of noise and the cat cocked his ears peeping around the cat leaped around the sofa and crept away. Yavar coughed huskily in the bright lit corridor, the long shadow of fences over the yard. Vahab switched off the candle on the wall, went up the stairs. His footsteps faded into the fluffy carpet. Granny was snoring. Turning the doorknob, he entered the room. Morning twilight, with its mellow and pale light, Mercury was shading a silhouette of velvet arcs over his head, and morning sunlight was shading all over the place. Dressed in pyjamas, drawing the bedspread, rested and rolled into that satin and soft bed, the crimson blanket over his head to his chin. While reading, he fell fast asleep. Around ten in the morning, while Lega was playing the piano, he woke up. For another half an hour, uh, the lay down. he lay down in bed, rolling from side to side. Two times a day, Lega played the piano, Italian capriccios, Franz Liszt's rhapsodies, and Mandelson's romances. For so many years, she had played them with 
a great skill in her fingers. No stranger could believe her skills. The spirit in her fingers and many years of practice, the stagnant maiden and silent youth all were her oppressed desires yearning in music and all this depended depend her strength closing the piano lid she felt young once more while turning back she was lega once again fierce and impatient yelled at yavar for mixing up her exceptional plate with others on the dish rack she had secluded herself with her cutlery and dishes golden felt tip mug the blue china dish sheffield bony forks before each meal she washed her mug carefully in a bright lit place not to observe a speck of dirt and stains on it if there was a guest at home mrs edrisi would glare at her out of anger yawning in bed vahab got up and dressed impeccably in a white iron shirt and tied a trench coat with button cuffs brushing his hair opened the central parting in the pick of youth he used to dress like an old man wearing a very strong perfume came to the breakfast table granny coughed what an awful smell you're reeking like egyptian mummies where the hell did you find it vahab knitted his eyebrows it's the perfume of deep oceans extracted essence of whale's abdomen a gift of Buenos iris mrs edrisi nodded you call it a present aunt lega frowned much better than a man's smell granny chuckled don't exaggerate it a man has a job a love affair a riding horse a hunting game or at least a kind of drinking habit in a pop side i wish there were a man here lega crumpled the napkin if you'd like a man here i'll go and get a room in the town dear no very free of men one would crawl into your room one night with a twist around the corner lines of her lips lega blushed hiding her face in her hands ran towards the door the sound of crying covered all over the house Yavar came in, smiling and peeping, asked the granny, Anything you would like? Mrs. Edrisi smiled, Come in. Miss Lega's annoyed, granny said, her hands clinging, Then if you could find her a suitor, it would be... Still Philly Yavar tiptoed to the door, Oh, heaven, forbid, never ever, haven't found a suitor and she hates me. Mrs. Edrisi pointed to the wooden tool. Get sit down. He hesitated, blew the dust over the stool, and finally sat down on the clean stool. Mrs. Edrisi said, Oh, leave it, dear. You'll dust off the stuff later. There won't be enough time. Such a big manor house needs more servants. Mrs. Edrisi sleeps wrinkled in the corner. Come on, I... I come on we are single-handed when the wages are low they come and see lega and they flee nobody's as faithful as you remember all the days those were the days once we cooked twenty rice bowls what was the name of that chef scratching her forehead pity i don't remember the name yavar lifted his chin haughtily abraham beg Abraham Beg. Oh God, I wish he had quit such horrible habits. He used to aim the knife at you as if stabbing. Yovar was mm, mm, biting his lips. Mrs. Edrisi sacked him for his dirty look at women. Mrs. Edrisi placed her hair behind ears, and you were the eye witness. The air was penetrating into his cheeks thoughtfully he spoke what shall i say he was a tatar with the habit of dancing with a knife quite irritated mrs edrisi said such nonsense my granny was a half-breed tatar severe seen never seen such habits among them rahila was a dec was decent as her 
The hope moved. There was there. Where was she from? Around Crimea, with a glamorous voice like night. <clears throat> Nightingales, her voice got a move on the windows. With a sparkle in his eyes, Wahab asked, What did she sing, Granny? It's a shame I cannot recall. Lega has taken after her in playing music. Wahab grinned, the only talent she's got. Mrs. Edrisi said she might have some other abilities not flowered yet. Wahab sneered. It's apparently late now. You've counted on her a big deal. Mrs. Edrisi's face colored. You two bear a resemblance. Quite irritated, looking at the table. Vahab complained. Granny, we have nothing in common. The old lady sighed. A mere bagatelle. At least Leros touching her life in hatred. How about you, scolding? As as dust. Yavar stared into flower patterns of carpet, twisting a hair of his moustache. Poor indigestion. It's the yellow bile. Some jujube and aloe vera would help. Vahab looked at the snowy landscape of the painting over the wall at the end of poplar tree, dark and cold. The footprints of Rahila, which were left, seemed fading. Mrs. Edry C and Yavar's eyes meet the old met the old lady shrugged her shoulders looked at the cards then the knave of hearts hearts it's a good sign lifted her eyebrows a letter might come who is it from only god knows the soldiers of the new government might have written letters to lega what were they called fire squad band they're called they, the wrinkles on Mrs. Edrisi's face disappeared at once. Long ago, they used to write letters to me. I never read them, tore up all, stared at the foggy branches of maple. A young soul soldier was in love with me. He wasn't from here, was in the regiment, had a childish face, dark blue eyes. One night I got up and I saw him. If my father could get it, he would turn him to a piece of... I got dressed and barefoot. One went to the garden with tearful eyes he said that he was not from the country county had come around to kick the bucket i said you must be insane lifting the lantern those satanic eyes looked like a hatchway to hell he disappeared after some month in the midwinter i got the words that he had taken the journey to the mountains he entered the anti-government campaign how's the fire squad band doing now filthy people the old man frowned and nodded they're not filthy it's the smell of yarrow yarrow leaves they consume the the yarrow leaves their boots are green their lips livid blue they consume pure grass when did they come Bahab twisted his moustache by his fingers, not worth speaking, never understood their attitude, inhumane, vulgar, barbaric. Do they ever think he touched the white flowers of the tablecloth, vain, hollow and mechanical man? Mrs. Edrisi asked, why don't you immigrate? Intellectuals like you have all left. The man yawned. No civilizations left. People all over, all over the world are dead from the neck up. He grasped his hands. Never take me a big-headed intellectual, greedy and benumbed golden beard and necks hand in hand with martial law have been buried somewhere in the hell my books and room would suffice Vahab's words seemed tedious to yavar he carried on with no care the time we were young we climbed down the valley of at moonlit night the fire squad band would stay on the mountain top and set a big fire mrs edrisi asked didn't you get scared Yavar blinked.
here what shall we call it their dazzling sparkling eyes like wolves mrs edrisi wrapped the woolen scarf around her arms i don't know what happened to the soldier joined them and became a devil he was in the first gang must be dead now yavar pondered tongue tied a herb they've taken mouth shut mrs edrisi said i've heard they never pray for the things they purchase yavar nodded Wahab closed the book. This is the privilege we have. Money matters. They never care for the dainty stuff. They return. Mrs. Edrisi asked, how can they pull the, 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 the wool over our eyes? Yavar hesitated. They come for an inquiry. They'd ask how many we were and what we do. The neighbors have told them about the charity hospitals. Mrs. Edrisi bent down. Why didn't you tell us sooner? Wahab clicked his jaws. So, one of these days they swarm over us like bugs. They, they ruin culture and beauty. Decadence has taken its place. He stood up and the chair was knocked by the table, walked along the room. The world is going to decline. We live at the age of Kali Yuga. Pity, a city like Nisa's bird. Looked at looked at mrs edrisi i wish i hadn't been born at the present time several centuries ago would fit me better the age of achilles Pericles, the knight of round table queens and the empress the story of shahzadeh and one thousand and one arabian knights or saint equinas his eye, uh, eyes radiant with the magnificence of the old age the old lady turned up her nose. You would have been a mis misanthropist at any age, looked at the plaster molding of the ceiling in regret. Before long, it'll be our turn. Since last week, I've been plagued with the nightmare of the fire squad as if their teeth were growing out of the grass, fuzzy hair mixed with the smell of flea fleecing wool marshing their boots i got up and went to the window gazed at the lamp post in the street shifting one by one do they ever sleep yavar lifted his chin two hours a day with nightmares got used to it and manners they laugh all in a group hairy bushy beardy and filthy people called them beefy the old lady got a glimpse a, a mine of room rumors asking Wahab, don't you look at the papers the man crumbled a piece of paper vulgar all the same scruffy faces holding guns with a flag in their hand marching could you get it granny long list the lists of executions let's uh, dispense with it mrs edrisi stared at the lamp bulb no peace anymore